Hey everyone, Nick Dearbertis here teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be talking about creating graphs in Python using Pandas. This is part of our lecture series on understanding complex results through visualization. So we learned in the last couple videos how we can use Pandas in Python as a way of putting our data into a tabular format and the other main usage that we're going to have for pandas is then to produce graphs from those data. So now that we already have a data frame to work with, it's quite easy to produce these plots. So here's a quick example of doing a plot in pandas. And really it comes down to one line of code. If we already have our data frame variable, then you do dot plot and then dot uh, whatever type of plot that you want to do and you tell it what are the x and y axes uh, giving it the column names of the data in your data frame. And that's, that's it, then it will produce the plot for you. Um, so quite straightforward. The other part that you see here is this matplotlib in line thing. Uh, don't worry too much about that. That's just something for Jupyter Notebooks that allows it to display these plots appropriately in all cases. So you just add this thing at the top of your notebook. You can put it with your imports. Just do it one time. Just have it there at the top. And then everything going forward, you just do uh, dot plot dot whatever to get your actual plot. And for any of the main chart types that you expect, you have that in Pandas. Um, so for all of the basic plot types, um, you know, we pretty much have a Python version which is analogous to the Excel version. Um, so here, you know, seeing a line plot in, uh, created from Pandas versus a line plot in Excel. Um, we have these column or bar charts. Uh, you can do box and whisker or whatever really else, uh, kind of all the basic general plot types. So let's go look at an example of this. So coming over to the intro to graphics Jupyter notebook. So first thing we're going to do is import pandas. And we're going to run this percent matplotlib in line thing. Again, don't need to worry much about what that is. Just do it once at the top of your notebook. Um, before we can plot something with pandas, we have to have a data frame which has data in it. So we'll go ahead and just create a data frame here. So going with the style of creating an empty data frame and then assigning columns. So here are assigning uh, some values. This could be like a stock price over time uh, and then get those time values. Um, so now we've got a data frame here and here I'm actually doing what's called a list comprehension to produce those values. Um, that is basically creating this list. We will cover this more later in the course. You don't have to worry about it for now. Um, just know that all we're doing is assigning lists to create these columns. So now that we have this data in this data frame, we can plot it. So you can just call just plot by itself without telling it the type of plot, and it's going to try to do the best job it can in producing a plot. So this is kind of analogous to the recommended charts in Excel. It's going to you know try to give you a recommended plot here in Python. Um, but we can see this is probably not what we wanted. Uh, we want to see these values over time. And right now it's plotting both the values and time. Um, and it's going against this index, this 0 to 10 thing here, which is why the first value we see is 0. Um, so what we can do is we can tell it the y and x values and it can do a better job now knowing more about what we want. So we know we want to have time on the x-axis and we want to have the values on the y-axis. So we just pass that to the plot command, values on the y and 
we want the, the T on the X, the names, the same names of the columns in this data frame. And now this looks more like what we might have expected. We have just the values plotted. It's over time. We already got an axis label for this automatically as well. And we can see this axis represents uh, the values. And now the axis has been fit well to the range of the values as well, rather than you know having to try and fit both of these completely different uh, scales on the same graph. Um, and so that we just did with plot. We said try and guess at the plot that we want. Um, but you can also explicitly tell it what type of plot that you want. Um, and to figure out what type of plots are available, you can, uh, after df.plot, then do another dot and hit tab, and you'll see the different possibilities come up. So we can do all these different um, kinds of plots. Um, so these represent most of what you would probably expect to see as far as plot options. Um, and here's just them printed out in the notebook. You don't have to worry about the code that does that. That was just so I could get them printed here. So let's look at a few examples. So we can do a dot plot dot area, again, passing the same y and x. And that's the same kind of plot, but it puts the full, you know, fills in the area under the line. Uh, we got bar graphs, dot bar. Uh, again, looks like we would expect, shows the values over time. And you have bar H to do a horizontal bar plot. So same, same thing as the prior graph, just now rotated. We can do a box and whisker plot with dot box. Uh, the box, box and whisker plots and the density and histograms, those are all good for giving uh, summaries of the distribution of the data. Um, so now we can see, uh, you know, the full range of the data, the interquartile range uh, plotted on here. Um, so that gives a nice summary. Um, we can do, you know, both density and histogram are kind of getting at the same concept. We want to see the distribution of the data um, across all the different values. How frequently are we getting different values? So the density is just a smoothed version of the histogram. So the histogram just puts things into buckets, says, you know, this uh, bucket is around 92.5 and then from like 93 to 95 is this bucket uh, how many values fall within that range well three are within like the 93 to 95 range and so you can see how many values occur in each of these ranges so the density plot is kind of the same thing we can see something similar here only it's like smoothed out across uh, all the different values rather than splitting it into buckets. And pie chart doesn't really make sense for these data, but you can certainly do that. Um, and if you had data where it was more appropriate, then it's a good option, uh, such as frequencies or percentages for different things. Um, and we see all the values laid out in a pie chart here. Scatter plots the individual points. Um, and so this kind of wraps up all the different basic plot types that you would probably be using in this class. And now, of course, there's way more that you can do by going to the base matplotlib that powers Pandas' plots, uh, but that's definitely getting outside the scope of this course. We just want to be able to quickly get a good representation of our data and pandas gets us all the way there and if you want to customize your plots in any way just google about map matplotlib and matplotlib customization there's a whole lot there and you can um, then take these pandas plots and add on that styling afterwards and customization afterwards 
So that's an overview on doing uh, graphing with Pandas in Python. Next time we're gonna come back and apply this, uh, these, this graphing as well as table visualization to the dynamic salary retirement model in Python. So thanks for listening and see you next time.